Hey y'all, my name is Shantae, and for today's episode of The Conversation, we're going to be discussing entrepreneurship and how to maintain your business even through hard times. Joining today's conversation is the co-founder of The Standard Grooming Company, located in Brooklyn, New York, is Vince Jamel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. No problem. So tell us about your company first and what okay. made you want to become a barber and get into the grooming industry. Okay. So the name of my company is the Standard Grooming Company. Uh, it was founded in 2018, two and a half years ago, um, by me, myself, and uh, my business partner, Autumn D. Audrey. Um, if you can imagine, uh, just pretty much an upscale barbershop. So we're appointment only. Uh, we offer a wide variety of services, like other than your typical barbershop. So we do facials. Um, it's really a very therapeutic and kind of like an upscale men's spa atmosphere. Um, let's see here. Uh, we've been doing that. It's been going well. Um, what else did you ask me? I'm sorry. Um, what made you want to get into the grooming industry and just become a barber? Uh, so what made me want to do it is that's a long story. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. It, that kind of started when I was like 12 years old. Oh, I've wow. kind of always been one that was into like fashion and style, uh, before I even was interested in hair. Uh, that just kind of goes with, you know, style and overall style. Right. Um, so just seeing my grandfather shave at 12 years old, that was really the first, my first introduction to like men's grooming. And I kind of always been like obsessed with like how a man should like present himself and like carry himself. So that kind of like was the first spark that kind of lit the fire. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. And so I know um, you and I went to college together. So I know you was the campus barber. Back in yeah, college, <laughs> what um, what was the so was it always your plan to have your own business even back in college or before then? So I mean, to begin with, I was only doing it for fun. Oh, okay. I mean, I was only charging. I see freshman year in college when I got to college, I wasn't even charging because uh, I was only doing like my roommate and like maybe one or two other people. But then I was like, okay, I need to start charging because. I started getting more and more inquiries. People want to get cuts. So I started charging $5 for haircuts and oh, $3 wow. for shape-ups. So like, I was literally $5. doing it. $5. Crazy. $5. <laughs> That's crazy. So I was literally doing it because I loved it. Like, I really enjoyed uh, just making people look good. I would, like, give yeah. people haircuts before, like, going out to the club or, like, any anything, going out to any kind of, like, event. Yeah, so I just, it was for the love at first. It's still for the love, but, yeah, I wasn't even trying to charge. Okay. So at what point did you decide, um, I'm, I'm going to do this for real. I'm going to go to barber school because you went to school here in North Carolina and right. then you moved up to New York, uh, where you are now, like right. what changed from, I'm going to do it cause I love it. Then I'm mm -hmm. going to charge five bucks and now, <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to have this business, this big business. Yeah. Yeah, so I would probably say, so I'm in school studying uh, at the time. Well, I was a freshman and I was studying accounting. That was my major. I absolutely hated accounting. I only chose that major because just doubling back to what I said before, you know, I was always intrigued by like wearing a suit or like how a man should be presented. So, you know, growing up, I only really knew of a few different ways in which, you know, I mean, occupations in which men wear suits. And I knew accounting was one. Nice. So I literally picked. I picked accounting because I knew I could dress up and I would be in the office and I felt like that was like the, you know, the standard, you know? Yeah. So, uh, that's interesting. Yeah. So I say, let me see what changed. Uh, maybe like sophomore year is when I really fell in love with, uh, cutting hair. And I really, I was like, yo, this is really what I love to do. Um, so I switched my major to business administration and I, then is when I was like, I'm going to learn everything about business I can learn. Then I'm just going to apply that to what I love and what I you know already know how to do with men's grooming. And I, I, I already set out, like, when I first started, I took it as, like, um, a profession. I never really looked at it as a hustle. So I was already, like, I'm going to, like, try to change the standard in men's grooming, like, from the beginning. Okay. All right. So um, what was the about 
the what was going on in men's grooming before that you didn't like? And why, how is your business different? Okay, so the number one thing I would say that I feel like the industry, I feel like we're getting better at as a whole. But I feel like the like the first thing is the fact that a lot of barbershops don't take appointments. Uh, like a typical like neighborhood barbershop, uh, you'll go in there and uh, your barber may tell you to come around two, three o'clock, or they may, you may just walk in and just wait for two hours for a haircut. That's pretty standard. That's pretty normal. Oh, wow. So walk in a barbershop, just wait an hour, two hours, you just wait until your turn. And then with that comes like barbers taking care of their friends before you, people jumping ahead of you. So that's probably the number one thing. Every other profession that you think of, like doctor's office, dentist's office, anything that requires an appointment, any profession where it's a service-based profession, it requires an appointment. So that's probably the number one thing um, yeah. that sets my shop apart. We're like sticklers on time. Um, we have a 15 minute grace period. So even if you come after that 15 minutes, we don't see you because yeah. we're so big on that time because we still accept you, the next person, we're gonna be late for the next person. So right. we try to respect people how we want to be respected, you know? You know, I didn't know that until just now because, you know, at hair salons, you have to make an appointment. And you might sit there for 15, 20 minutes, an hour, but you have an appointment. It's not just you just show up. So that's the first time I've heard about that. Yeah, we're so behind in that sense, like as a whole. I I don't understand. I guess because traditionally the barbershop is kind of like, it still is. It's it's a safe haven for like, especially for black men. It's a a safe haven. It's, It's a place where, you know, we feel like we can open up and, uh, you know, talk, like, kind of have a discussion uh, amongst other men. So kind of like the appointment, when it was first introduced, when we first introduced it, it's kind of like a lot of people felt like they took the essence of the barbershop out of it. Hmm. But then, you know, it took people to actually try it out to see that it doesn't take it out. It's yeah. kind of like a traditional mindset, that's all. That's interesting. I, that's, yeah. that's crazy. But I love the fact that that makes just so much more sense because I know when mm-hmm. I go to the to get my hair done. I don't want to be sitting around. I don't want right. her to take her friends in front of me. That's just, I'd probably just leave. So it's, it's I the worst. <laughs> I can't believe y'all men have been putting up with this for so long. Forever, forever, forever. Yes. It's like a thing. It's like a normal thing. Yeah. Well, that's good that y'all did that. And so um, why did you choose Brooklyn? Cause I know you're from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Why not Fayetteville? Why Brooklyn over Fayetteville or, or some other location? Okay. So I still, I mean, I still love Fayetteville. That's my home. Um, I was in Fayetteville till I was 17. Then went to Greensboro. I love Greensboro. Uh, I worked in a shop in Greensboro, Heads Up Barbershop, for about, I think it was like a year and a half I worked there. Um, but that was kind of like my stepping stone to moving here. Um, I wanted to work there and kind of get my feet wet when I, th- when I graduated from barber school. Um, I chose Brooklyn. I moved, I lived in Harlem for six months when I first I uh, moved to New York. I've been in New York for, it'd be six months. I mean, six years in about two months. Okay. So um, I was in Harlem for six months, but I was always working in Brooklyn. Just because there was really the shop that I kind of garnered a relationship with um, while I was in North Carolina was a Brooklyn-based shop. And just asking around and doing my research, I kind of figured Brooklyn was more my style, my speed. Um, it's like very diverse. It's very like uh, art- artistic. Uh, yeah, I felt like that was just my vibe and, um, it was the right decision because I'm in love with Brooklyn. Right. Okay. (laughs) Nice. I've never been to Brooklyn. I've been to New York a couple of times, Harlem. Um, I've stayed with a friend in Harlem, um, other spots, but I never been to Brooklyn. So I'm gonna have to come up there. It's amazing. It's fire. (laughs) Nice. Nice. So, um, so my next question is, you told me, so I know you're in a partnership. You said it's with two other people, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so... No, it's actually, so it's okay. two other barbers that work at the shop, okay. but one other partner in the business. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So how important is it um, to have that team? Because so many times um, people start businesses by themselves. And I was actually at a conference, uh, I think it might have been last year with uh, Black Enterprise. Okay. And one of the speakers there said that one of the issues that they see uh, within Black businesses specifically is that everyone's starting their own business. He called it a solo entrepreneur. Um, but he doesn't see them reach scale and really 
make the money that they want to make because they're kind of going at it by themselves. Um, so I mm-hmm. guess that's one reason to have a partnership. But why? Um, what was your? What were your reasons? Is it because you felt it, you would scale your business easier with a partner? And why did you pick your particular business partner? Well, I kind of always felt like um, this is kind of like a, like a life philosophy of mine. I feel like you can do more uh, with the right person or people, group of people, than you can do by yourself. That's kind of always something that's been like ingrained in me, like since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I played basketball as a kid growing up, so all through my uh, like younger years, I was like the team captain. But it was always instilled in me that you know, and I can do, I can be an amazing player, but if I don't have my team. Uh, to do what they're supposed to do. If we don't work together as a team, then we're not going to be able to accomplish our goals. So that kind of was in me since I was a kid. And I kind of carried that, carried it in my business because I did it. I was in a sense running a business on campus, uh, a solo business on campus. And I, so I kind of had a little experience with doing my own thing that way. Right. Uh, I loved it. It was, it was cool. I enjoyed it, but you can experience burnout and trying to do everything yourself. Yeah. And as you said, scaling is hard to grow. Uh, when you're doing everything yourself, and especially when you're doing everything yourself, you have a tendency to like not delegate or hire people to do things. You right. feel like, you know, you can do everything versus me with my partner, Autumn. Sometimes I'll kind of get into that uh, mentality of like trying to do everything. And then mm-hmm. she comes in and balances it out. Well, you know, you don't have to do that. We can get somebody to do this or hire somebody or I can do it or so it's good to have that that sounding board and it's good to have that person to kind of like keep you stable and keep you grounded and equal. Um, it's, it's truly a team and it's, it's been amazing. And I would recommend somebody uh, to like have a partner first before you try to dabble in like having something all, all by yourself. So I wouldn't say I wouldn't don't start a business by yourself. Yeah. If you're going to do that, I would say make sure you know who you are as a person. Uh, make sure you know you're very self-motivated. Mm-hmm. Um, self-determined, disciplined, um, right. because it's all on you. Right. So, you know, but I think it takes it takes a, a person to be able to, like, have somebody to kind of be accountable for. That's really what it is. Because mm-hmm. when you have a partner, it's like they really hold you accountable. And it's, like, more of a, like, it's one thing to let yourself down, but to, like, let somebody else down. It's, yeah. like, uh, it's, it's a different feeling. Right. So it's just, I think that's just important to just kind of have that in the back of your head. Like when I don't feel like doing something, it's just kind of like, I'm like, I can't, I can't let my partner down. Man. This is, this is her and her family riding on this. It's not just me. Because for one, I'm a single man. She's married with a kid. So that's another thing that's always in my head. Like, it's not just always about me. It's like several people involved and affected by the decisions that I make every day. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Yeah. And so trying to build that team. Um, as you probably know, I'm an entrepreneur as well. I'm, I'm more mm-hmm. of a solopreneur right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you build that team? How do you even get to that place? Um, where did you go to meet your business partner? And then um, just go from there. Because okay. there's so many people, like I said, they have so many different ideas. But how do you, so obviously she's a barber as well, correct? Right, right. And she's actually, she's been doing this for way longer than me. Okay. Um, she's been doing this for like 25 years. Um, oh, so we okay. actually worked together previously at another salon. Okay. Um, and we, our stations were uh, right beside each other. Okay. So we kind of had a relationship with each other that was kind of closer than the other barbers in the shop. Okay. So we kind of, you know, we just proximity. We just beside each other. So we always had like the conversations um, with each other. And it was always kind of like, we always kind of clicked. Mm-hmm. And interestingly enough, uh, all the barbers in my shop are Libras. That just randomly happened. Okay. Yeah, we're all Libras. Oh, wow. Uh, Troy, the other groomer, her, him and Autumn had the same exact birthday. And my birthday is seven days later. So I say that to say we just always had a connection. Yeah. So it was easy for me to be like, hey, it was, it was weird because we were both thinking about growing at the same time and thinking about possibly uh, opening a business around the same time. So when I brought it, to her attention, she was like, you know, I've been thinking about that too. So it was just like perfect. All the stars just like lined up. And uh, she comes in to where like, she has more experience than me. She's been in the game longer than me. She knows the ins and outs. Uh, so she brings that experience to the table. And I kind of bring, you know, the creativity, the youth. I have like the 
the the new ideas. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really a, it's a great balance. Okay, so proximity. Yeah. Um, I guess is easy easier for you being a barber because you all worked in the same shop, so you got to see right. each every day. So that's how you built your team. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. I know you mentioned you're single, so you probably have a little bit more time than someone who's married with kids, um, but you're still busy. So yeah. how do you balance being an entrepreneur and just your other priorities in life, family and everything else that's going on? Yeah, it's tough. Um, well, I'm off on Sundays and Mondays. So that's usually my days where I kind of like organize my life. <laughs> okay. I, I'm kind of like, that's when I'm like talking to all my family members, I do most of my communicating with people on Sundays and Mondays. Okay. But yeah, it's definitely tough because I work long hours. Um, it's a sacrifice. That's that's a big thing as an entrepreneur. Like, I can't imagine right now if I had a full family, wife and kids. I yeah. couldn't imagine that right now. I don't know how I would be able to do it. So I'm just really focusing. One of my biggest focuses on this year is uh, being able to work on my business and not just working in my business. So just trying to find out other revenue streams where it can take me away so I don't have to physically be there all the time because I'm not getting any younger. So I definitely want to be able to eventually have a family. So, yeah, it's tough, but, you know, it's a sacrifice. That's, a, that's the best way I can say it. It's a sacrifice. And um, your loved ones in your life just really have to understand that you're working on a bigger mission. But at the same time, you can't take that for granted as the actual person. You got to actually make sure I said, better those relationships too exactly okay yeah. so um basically you just have to delegate your days so these days i'm making sure i'm contacting my family these right days, it's just work and they just so communication as well letting them know this right. is what it has to be and it sounds kind of like inauthentic or like but i mean you my life is a schedule yeah so i mean say hey, on sundays and mondays i talk to my mother like we'll text throughout the week little short messages back and forth, but I actually have that 45 minute hour conversation with my mom. It's like on a Sunday or a Monday. Right. Uh, she knows that she understands that. So we do like a FaceTime, uh, you know, thankfully with technology, you can do that. So we do a FaceTime every Sunday and Monday. Um, sister, all my family, they know that's my day. So you have to do it. You have to, you have to plan it out or you'll never get that time in. Exactly. Okay. Um, so what would be your advice for um, anyone trying to start a business, whether it be a, a grooming company or a barbershop um, or any kind of business? What would be your, uh, let's say your top five points of advice? Okay. Top five points of advice. Um, definitely you got to do your research. Uh, do your research, research, research. Eventually you're going to have to make that leap, but do as much research as possible mm -hmm. um, to try to like forego some of those mistakes before you get into it. Right. Um, okay. So that's one research. I would say, uh, I mean, you can't be afraid to fail. I know everybody says yeah. that, but that's, yeah. that's so that's true. Real thing, you yeah. can't be, cause you're going to, you're going to fail at something. Like mm -hmm. if you start something, you're going to make your mistakes. So you might as well just go ahead and just make that leap. Like you're going to fail. So you can't be afraid to fail. That's probably my biggest one actually. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's see, you can't, you can't get easily discouraged because it's going to be ups and downs. Like you can't beat yourself up too much. Just take every lesson as a learning, as a learning lesson, as a learning point. Um, because yeah, everything is going to come your way when you, when you run the business. Like I could have never imagined COVID happening within two years of us opening oh, this. Oh, right, right. Yeah. So that's just, you can't plan for certain things. So that, that uh, don't easily get discouraged uh let's see what else uh manage your money <laughs> that's right. a big one make sure you have an accountant uh some uh, if you have a background in that but i would advise hiring somebody to do it mm -hmm. um have somebody that's on top of that make sure you're on top of your finances because you know emergencies happen things happen all the time again COVID happened and we had to shut down our shop for three months straight with zero income. So, wow. yeah, imagine that. A lot of businesses were lost because they didn't financially prepare for it. Exactly. Like um, I don't know if I have a fifth one. Those are like my main ones, I would say. Um, yeah, those are like my, those are my ones, yeah. 
Okay. So with the COVID, um, because we're still dealing with that pand- this pandemic, yeah. what would be your advice to get through that? Because so would it be just making sure the businesses are saving money, setting that money aside, or would it be something else? Uh, a little bit of it is for sure. You got to plan as much as, like I said, you got to plan as much as you can, but for something like this, nobody ever saw anything like this happening, but you got to find a way to make adjustments to the times. Right. There's no way. I mean, life in itself isn't the same. I don't think it would ever be the exact same yeah. as it was before. So as a business, if you don't make adjustments, then you're going to, you're going to go out of business. Um, mm-hmm. In New York, we're we're back and forth from restaurants being able to be open, close, open, close. So yeah. you see restaurants building outdoor spaces just yeah. for this t- for this time. But if you don't, you only depend on like take out orders. So what we did, just using myself for an example, okay. we had to um, figure out other ways, other revenue streams. So our biggest thing that we came out with was uh, we started a merch line, um, Never Settle, I'm wearing it right now. Um, we started that and that was been like huge for us. So that was our biggest uh, adaptation to the circumstances was uh, starting that. And it's been like, it, it blew up and it's become like our motto now. It okay. kind of took on this life of its own. So yeah, that's, that's been, that's been real dope for us. Okay. So merchandise, that's good. Yeah. So y'all sell that on your website as well? Yes, we do. Uh, so the standard and you can also see it on our IG, uh, uh, standard grooming at standard grooming but yeah you can see all our merch there that's one thing that i've definitely i've always heard about businesses having merch um but i didn't realize how much people are into merch and just love to support something that they already support um it's kind of like when you go to a concert your favorite artist you want to just you want to take them with you it's like you love them so much i have to have a shirt a sweatshirt or something that just reminds me of that experience but i never thought it would be the same with like a barbershop right but but it's i mean truth be told it's like if a person enjoys your business and enjoys uh the experience they get when they come to your business they want to like always have that experience with them that's kind of how i think about it and it's kind of like buying that merch is like an extension of the experience they had when they uh patronize the business that okay. makes sense. yeah no that sounds good that's definitely good um, any closing statements for all the entrepreneurs out there, wannabepreneurs, solopreneurs, um, anything that you want to encourage or leave with them as far as encouragement, any challenges uh, that you overcame for advice? Well, I would say for advice, I would say if there's something burning with inside you, you, we always, we, you know that feeling, you know you have something that's just like keeping you up at night and something that you love to do, but you're kind of ignoring it. Yeah. Uh, don't ignore it because it's, it's, it's something, it's, it's just your passion. Everybody's like, oh, I got to find my passion. I got to find my passion. But it's not some extra deep thing to me. It's like, it's that thing or things. You can, I feel like you have more than one passion right. that you just love doing that you would do for free. So just follow that feeling. And then secondly, I would say it's okay to like not know everything at once. Mm-hmm. It's okay to not even be an entrepreneur. I don't think every single person is meant to be an entrepreneur. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's like my biggest thing. Like, it's okay to take different routes. Entrepreneurship can take so many different, you know, have so many, wear so many different hats. You can take so many different ways of entrepreneurship. So, yeah, I would just say, like, just take your own path. And know it's good to, like, listen to people and, uh, you know, do your research and, like, listen to interviews, like, interviews like this. Um, but grab bits and pieces from different people and like create your own path. All right. That's, that's the biggest thing. You got to, you got to do what you got to do. Right. Sounds good. All right, Vince. Um, where can people find you online and more information about your business? Okay. So pretty much everything is on our IG, um, at standard grooming. Uh, if you don't have IG, uh, you can follow us on our follow us, but visit us online at the standard grooming.com. And everything is there. Our services, uh, everything we offer is, is there to do that. All right. Sounds good. All right, brother. Well, I appreciate <laughs> you stopping by. That's all I got. Thank um, you. <laughs> this was really good. Um, this is actually one of my first or my first uh, entrepreneurial interview for this channel. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah. Nice. Well, this was nice. good. Everything thanks, was good. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. No problem. Well, that's it. And you have a good one. All right. Thank you. Bye.
Bye.